So how do you do a movie review of a film that you're still trying to wrap your mind around and understand? Um, this might be premature in doing it, but I was captivated by the film Vesper, which came out in 2022. It's a, a science fiction um, drama that stars, um, um, that features a little girl who is 14 years old and she lives with her father. And somehow this, this girl has all of this knowledge as far as bioengineering and I'll do the best that I can with the uh, with the script and conveying what the film is actually about. So Vesper takes place in this, and that's the, the name of the, the lead character, which is the 14-year-old girl. But the world of Vesper takes place in the future in a dystopian society, uh, but it's pretty unique. It's all based off of bioengineering. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it, it's insinuated that the world has ended um, from a, a biological catastrophe. And now it's hard to even grow vegetables and all these people have been wiped out. And they've gone back to a very primitive way of living. And it turns out that Vesper's able to um, understand some of the bio... Uh, engineering stuff uh, that you know could possibly uh, change some things within the uh, the the society and the community that she lives in. And Vesper lives with her father, who is in a catatonic, paralyzed state. His body is paralyzed, but his mind is able to operate through a drone which floats around. And she's drawn this smiley face on him, and he. Uh, He's Vesper's companion. You know, he's her father, but he's also her companion. So through technology, Vesper is able to still connect with her father. And it turns out that there is a, a kind of shady character which leads the society. Um, <laughs> and there's some bio breeding type thing that he's overseeing that he has children and women and all these uh, different people as well as some biological uh, specimens that are mishaps. They're kind of like these, these strange um, bioengineered beings that serve some sort of purpose. Um, and again, the film is very strange. It's very, very surreal. Its visuals are surreal. It's um, the way that it, the, the aesthetic, it's, it's very bio. And that's the only way that I can I can put it. Um, and that that fat drop of the the these factories and these villages and these uh, plants that react almost like uh, sentient beings that can feel and understand things, they populate the landscape. Well, where you have these uh, kind of uh, these little, these little uh, communities of impoverished people, Vesper being a part of that community, they live on the outskirts of, uh, of, of a community called the Citadel. And the Citadel are the ones that have the privilege. And it turns out that a Citadel vehicle crashes. And one of the Citadel is, um, is a, a woman and her father. And the the lord of the community ends up killing the father and Vesper takes in the uh his daughter. And she she's very reluctant to tell the woman that her father is dead. But then it takes a twist and Vesper finds out that that's not really her biological father, something else is going on. And I'm not going to get into any major plot twists. Um, I want to get into what I think Vesper best represents, which is, you know, although the, the plot is confusing, the visuals are very concise in what they want to do. And that's where the artistry and the magic happens. That and the acting is very good in this film. Um, you feel the connection between Vesper and her father. 
Um, <laughs> you feel the connection grow between Vesper and the um, the woman who's trying to get back to the Citadel. And you also feel the menace of the man who is overseeing this um, this community that he's lording over. And you also find out the connection that Vesper's father has with this man. You know, what, what they're what the um what is the connection between these two what is their um what is their relationship and it it the, the layers come off and you figure out um and this is the only well I won't even give that spoiler because that 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 takes away some of the weight of the film um but there's a there's a there's a plot twist I have to say I've never seen a movie that looks like Vesper um it's almost like this would be a great movie to watch over the weekend with City of Lost Children, if that makes any sense. Anyone who's familiar with that film, if you're not familiar with it, um, check it out. Uh, the guy that plays Hellboy is starring in it, and it's a, it's another one of those surreal uh, art house pictures that, that ends up being entertaining. Vesper is very ominous and it's visually it it visually captures this bio organic uh futuristic world it's almost as if um it's it's uh, uh Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind it feels a lot like that anime so if you're into something like that this is very similar um and Vesper has an understanding of all of the organisms that the P that that they have to live amongst and that right there is is so interesting um it does it does a little bit of world building but you can't you can't world build within the frame of a movie a lot of that world building stuff should happen over this over a series of movies or over a a, a series of um streaming uh shows <coughs> two hours is not a lot of time to put in a movie to completely build a world. But what's there has its own logic, has its own method, and you have a, a, a very unique looking science fiction world. Uh, you can feel the weight and the gravity of, of the people who are oppressed by their circumstances. And you feel the danger from the elder over that, that, um, township that community um and you don't know quite which way he's gonna go <laughs> i can't remember that guy's name but he kills it in his performance but he always does i can't remember his name but he was in several movies um one of those movies i remember was uh, my first saw him in gangster number one with um uh, malcolm mcdowell that's a movie that you really need to see and i think that movie put paul battany on the map I can never rem remember the names of the, the actors or actresses that I'm referring to. I don't know why, but it's <laughs> my memory always goes blank, especially with those character actors that normally aren't leads. But um, if I found a, a fault with Vesper, it's it's that there was too much world to build in the frame of in the framework of of, of the time that was allotted for that movie to uh, to even uh, run. If there were more world building and some of the things were more fleshed out with the Citadel and their eventual pursuit of the woman when they come to retreat the woman from the Citadel, if they if they talk more about um, certain things, then I don't think Vesper would be as confusing. But as it stands, it's a confusing, beautiful, uh, great film. And I have to give it a... Um, I have to give it a good score. I have to give it a, um, it's not quite five star, but I will give it, um, I'll give it four stars because I haven't seen anything like it. And it was a very, very refreshing science fiction. Um, I encourage you to experience Vesper. If you are a hardcore sci-fi, uh, fanatic like I am, if you're not past this movie by, it will frustrate you. If you are a fan of stuff like, um, <clears throat> excuse me um battlefield and um 
you know, these other science fictions that are very glossy, very shiny, uh, albeit poorly acted, that are part of the mainstream, then you don't want to watch this. This will make you mad if you're a fan of that type of material. Uh, those who like their science fiction more cerebral, you know, I challenge you to take a chance with it. So I'm recommending Vesper. And um, hopefully you'll get something out of it if you decide to, to watch it. This is the Brave Artist for Screen Say, uh, inviting you all to like, share, and subscribe to this channel and help us grow. And until the next review, take care.